Welcome to Sincerely Me, a podcast about self-discovery and inner work so you can cultivate a deeper relationship to yourself and show up more fully in your work and life. My name is Talia Delju, and I'm honored to be your host. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I know I probably shouldn't say this, but here I am saying that this episode might be one of my favorites to date. Lyric and I had such an awesome and fun conversation about finding worth in yourself and what happens when you no longer gain your sense of worth in the prestigious titles and roles and masks that you've taken on over the years. We talk a little bit about the realities of pursuing your passion, what it's like to let go of the security blanket and the stability of a full-time job, and the importance of becoming your own best friend in the process. We talk about some things like the death of your ego, what it's like to remove the mask you've been so comfortable wearing for so long and feeling a little naked, right? When you no longer have these things to identify with, who are you? Who do you want to be seen as? How do you want to show up in the world? And a lot of the questions we pose to the listeners are questions like, you know, who are you without the job, the title, the company that you define yourself by? What matters enough to you to pursue even if you failed? Why are you doing what you're doing? What do you believe in deeply enough to pursue with integrity, even if it's never in the spotlight the way you might want it to be? So yeah, lots of good tidbits in this episode. Cannot wait for you to give it a listen. As a storyteller herself, Lyric is a journalist, a writer, and photographer, and has so many beautiful insights and stories and experiences to share with us in today's conversation. So give it a listen. I hope you enjoy. Here's my conversation with Miss Lyric Lewin. Hi, Lyric. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Talia. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So just a bit of backstory, Lyric and I met at an event a few months ago, it's actually been a while now, um, for the Dean's List. And the Dean's List, and you probably know this better than me, but the Dean's List is a community for women who come together over different kind of dinner topics and are guided through really meaningful conversations and make really awesome connections with other women in the room. And when Lyric and I connected, She shared with me a story about how she transitioned from a job to working for herself full time. And a big part of what she shared with me was about this lesson in finding worth in herself throughout that transition and not identifying herself so much by this kind of prestigious title that she had held in her job. And so I immediately reached out to her and said, "Uh, please come on to the podcast because we talk a lot about finding worth in yourself. We talk a lot about how to define who you are outside of the external, you know, titles and roles and things that quote unquote signal success to the outside world. So I was super thrilled when she said yes to being on the podcast and would love for us to start there, Lyric. If you could walk us through your journey and transition from your job at CNN to where you are now and how this process of self-discovery and finding worth in yourself really came about. Absolutely. So I worked at CNN actually right after I graduated from University of Georgia. I started at um, the photo department and for CNN Digital. So that's all things on the website and all things on mobile platforms. And I was working there for five years. I learned so much. I worked with in like really incredible people who um, – truly poured into me in a way that I learned a lot while I was there. But as I was working, because I was working on breaking news and really heavy um, topics, some of the things that I found myself wanting to pursue journalistically in my off time that I would pitch to CNN had to do more with um, kind of like a compassionate feature human interest type story. So for instance, I did a lot that actually involved journalistic 
uh, stories that had food as a basis, kind of like in the vein how Anthony Bourdain would, he's someone I've always looked up to, he would use food as a medium to hear people's stories, like it was an intro to opening the door to conversation. And I loved that food did that. And so I started to pitch stories and write stories, even while I was still at CNN, that had to do with that. So I worked with this chef, Whitney Otaka, who works um, down on Cumberland Island, running this program at the Grayfield Inn there. And she cares a lot about sustainability for the environment and using food that's locally sourced. So I, it was a way to enter into a conversation about sustainability. And then I did another story with, about this amazing woman named Reem Cassis, who's a writer, and she wrote this cookbook called The Palestinian Table. And it was a way for her to talk about her narrative and her culture and her history outside of the way the media and the news, like mainstream media usually talks about Palestine. So I was really intrigued with these stories where people were using food as kind of like the intro or the backbone of a story to talk about a bigger concept. So it was probably in January of 2018 that I felt like I am ready to pursue the next step in like pursuing stories that I really want to do full time. And it's terrifying to leave a job that's a prestigious title and it's an organization that everyone knows about. So there was like a security blanket in that feeling like, well, I can tell people where I work and they know what that is. And there's a certain level of respect for that. But to branch out on my own, as terrifying as that was, I was like nearing the end of my 20s and felt like if I don't do it now, I really don't think I'll ever do it. I think I'll miss my window. So I saved up and like strategized for eight months from January of 2018 till August is when I like had my game plan to to officially make my exit and start my own business um, from that point. Wow. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about the the hard part there being i mean a lot of hard parts to that right like it's no easy transition to make but especially when it comes to your identity being tied to a title and a name that's recognized and respected like letting go of something like that is something most people probably don't know how to do or if like if they wanted to do it they wouldn't think it would be possible because that's what we like. We value the things that other people value, and we are kind of taught to define success in a certain way. So, let's talk a little bit more about just like the mindset around that and how you were able to make that shift from here's what is valuable to actually, no, here's, here's who I am, here's what I actually want to do, and that's enough for me. Absolutely. That was honestly the really difficult part because I was not only in a position as an editor at CNN where photographers and writers were pitching content to me and I had like a level of authority where I could hire people literally around the world, like the level of access is amazing, to transitioning to a job where now I'm pitching to editors and wanting to find work at different publications, even now, like with this, with the project, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later on, the project that I left to pursue involved a lot of traveling and photography and connections like around the world, focusing on female chefs and pitching that project has been very, um, like very eye-opening and a huge learning experience. But in a lot of ways, I felt like I was starting at square one all over again. Like I entered into my job at CNN when I was 23 and had this level of, um, yeah, just this level of autonomy. Like I work for this organization and people are pitching things to me. And now I'm starting (laughs) like over five years later and like starting from square one and asking people, how do you do like as a freelancer, like what are your rates? What are you charging? Like my only concept for a lot of like rates and pitching styles were from CNN. So to start from square one was definitely, definitely humbling. Um, And just having that like safety net of knowing this is how I can describe myself to people because my husband's also a 
a journalist and he works in sports journalism, soccer journalism specifically. And I went on a trip with him last fall and it was the first time that I had to introduce myself with my new title. And it was so painful. Mm -hmm. Like it was really difficult to have to, for the first time meeting all these really amazing journalists from all over the world. We were in Montevideo, Uruguay. It was like a beautiful um, location for the tournament he was working. And I wanted so badly to introduce myself with my old title. Like, oh, I kn- I understand like your work. I know what you're doing. I'm actually worked for a digital news organization too. But just saying like, I'm Lyric, I'm a photographer. <laughs> I'm still working on like starting my business. It was very, very mm-hmm. humbling. And I think that's something that I didn't anticipate was just like the ego um like the ego trip that I, or not trip, but like feeling like a little insecure that I didn't have this like impressive title anymore. And I was starting from square one was, yeah, something I didn't anticipate at all. Yes. Okay. I'm so glad that you brought that up because so much of what I've seen happen in those moments too, is that we, it's this, it's the idea of like playing small and shrinking behind something that kind of becomes a cover, like a mask, right? Like a title like that, uh, uh, being able to say I'm a part of an organization like this almost feels like a mask. Like you can kind of hide behind something and and the assumption is that people see worth and value in the title, not in you. Right. And when you strip yourself of that title, no, nothing, there's no mask anymore, right? It's like a full on, like, I'm naked, I'm standing in front of these people, and they can actually, like, I, the only thing that determines my value and worth is me. And when I haven't been in a situation that's forced me to determine what my own value and worth is because I've been hiding behind a job title, an organization, a company name, a whatever external thing, like, yeah, that's for sure an ego, like, death of ego, right? Like, <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. And takes a lot of, takes a lot of courage. And I think takes, takes knowing also that your, like the hesitation we might feel in those moments when we say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a photographer versus I work for CNN. Like, we're already assuming that people are judging, but it's only self-judgment. We're only – those judgments are only things we're thinking about ourselves and assuming that other people are also thinking about us, which we have no – like no facts to prove that, right? right? But because we – because it affirms our own self-belief, it – we don't question whether or not other people are actually thinking it. We just assume that they're also judging us as hard as we're judging ourselves. Exactly. It's so true. I love everything you just said because I felt like I didn't realize that I was validating my worth and my existence with my job title. Like I had put so much of my identity into that, that when it was Mm -hmm. stripped away from me, then I realized, oh my goodness, like who am I without this? Have I really just built my identity around this job title? And I think even having it at a formula like a um, formative time of life being there from 23 to 28. That's like a big part when your identity is forming too, when you're in your Mm -hmm. 20s like that. So I think um, I feel lucky in some ways that I'm able to have this um, reevaluation of my identity while I'm still young and still have a lot of life ahead of me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was definitely a, a process where I had to realize, do I want to just be known for what I do and what I produce? Or do I want to be someone who is like connecting to people and showing compassion and like being as kind and life giving to people around me, you know, as I possibly can, instead of just being someone that's known for what they produce? Yeah, absolutely. And that's like, that's such a huge question to ask yourself. And another one, another question being, you know, who, for whoever's listening, like, who are you without the title that you're holding on to so tightly right now? What does the thought of not having that title bring up for you? What fears does it bring up? What, or maybe it brings up excitement, like what emotion comes up for you when you think about no longer holding the title you hold and why that's such an important question and conversation to have with yourself is because titles are temporary. Like Mm -hmm. when we put our sense of worth and value in something external and something so temporary, 
what kind of way is that to shape your identity? Not to say that these titles and roles aren't influencing who we are in our identities, but like to tie it so closely to something that you know at some point is no longer going to be what you're doing is it, it, it's worth taking the time to ask yourself these questions, knowing that eventually you're going to be in a place where you're going to either be wearing another mask or you're going to decide to not have a mask on at all. And yeah, so I think it's, it's a worthy, it's a worthy question to spend some time asking yourself. Right. Absolutely. And even when I left, I was thinking, because I had made such a strategic game plan, I was still operating from a place of thinking, well, I have these trips. I had um, different contacts in three different countries where I was going to start, kind of launch this project about female chefs around the world. And even in the process of that, and then returning home from that and writing and pitching and like editing the photos and putting this out there. I was hoping this story in my mind and my game plan was going to be published immediately. And Talia, just now I found a publisher for it, like just now. So it just goes to show like, even wow. when you have plans like, oh, well, of course I'll come home and then I'll get this published in January. And like seven months later, just now, like things take so much longer than mm -hmm. you anticipate. And life is so much of like, my success that I wanted for myself was based on this timeline I had created. Well, if I get it published immediately, then it'll show that, you know, I'm taking care of business and being productive. But even just like having it um, take so long actually helped me realize a part of myself, even though it was more painful that it took so long to get it published, was that I realized I'm really tenacious. Like I didn't know that about myself until mm -hmm. I was like, forced to just keep going and not give up and like face these circumstances where it was painful without the title, then it was painful to get my work rejected on a regular basis. But I kept going and having that kind of rise to the surface made me respect myself in a new way that I don't think I would have learned that about myself if I had just stayed where I was. Yes, I love that. And that's where, you know, the, the sense of worth continues to grow in different ways when you're when you only have yourself to depend on, like when it's just you, yourself, and you, <laughs> like, right, right, you, some beautiful things come to surface, and some not so beautiful things. You know, it's it's not all rainbows and butterflies, but it's I've I've found in my own life and in the journeys and stories of people who I've spoken with and coached and had on the podcast that it's. It's in those moments of life where there's no one else to turn to but you and you have to depend on yourself and you have to kind of rise to the occasion to meet yourself where you're at, become your own best friend, become your own biggest champion. That is where true transformation is really able to happen. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. That's so well said because I feel like that's another reason I was so looking forward to talking with you about this is just I think the way that sometimes things are portrayed and even I don't even have like a huge like following on social media. I'm not super um, active on social, but I just had a lot of people reach out and say things like, oh, it looks like you're doing so well. Like it's amazing you left CNN and now you're traveling the world and like getting your stuff published. And I, I felt after a while, like it was just important for me to be honest and say, like, I have had so many nervous breakdowns, like being on this process where my husband and like my family have just heard me like reevaluating myself and just, oh my goodness, the amount of times like I've yeah. cried in the car, cried in the bathroom, like cried in all these different places while I'm trying to figure out like, what am I doing? Is that like it, t everything is stripped away and I'm just like, pursuing something that I think is a good idea and hoping it's going to work out is not like as glamorous as I think it looks yeah. online or on how we portray it. So it's just important for me to tell other people like it is great to pursue your dreams and it is worth it, but it's not, maybe some people find instant success, but I definitely have it and it is hard work. I just think that's important to share too, because I don't want it to look like my life's mm. just been a breeze since I left. Oh, so important to share. Honestly, <laughs> at least once a week, I'm on a job board looking at jobs because yes. it, right. Like there's, there's, and it might be a grass is greener on the other side thing. It might be partly a, like, oh, I'm just tired and like wouldn't just being in a job that paid me a certain amount of like certain money be easier. And and so, yeah, I absolutely think it's important to talk about those moments of 
non-glam end of exhaustion and of questioning and of reevaluating and asking yourself, is like, why am I doing this? Is this what I really want to be doing? What does this mean to me? Why does this matter? And yeah, especially in a digital age when we're seeing what everybody else is doing, we have there's so many options. There are so many ways to be successful in the world. And it's that much harder to trust that we're on the right path for ourselves in that season. Not to say that it, you know, it could absolutely change a year down the road, but it takes a lot of knowing yourself enough to be able to trust and be confident in where you're at in that present moment without worrying too much about the future or dwelling on the past, that is quite a practice. And it's something that I think we're all going to spend the next many years trying to perfect. Um, yes. But yeah, it's it's definitely the, the clarity comes in bits and pieces. And there are definitely days where, goodness, the thought of an alternative path is definitely there is there's an appeal at times for sure. I love that you said that because I have definitely applied to so many full-time jobs. And I even had an interview with someone and I got to the point where they're like, so what is the appeal of this job? And I was like, how do I tell them that like the steady like health insurance and the paycheck is the most appealing part of this job? Because that's obviously not a good enough reason. But I was like, oh my gosh, that's where my head and my heart is right now. I'm like, I just don't want to like track down, like I don't want to send another invoice and track down another like paycheck that was supposed to be mailed. Sometimes freelancing is so exhausting because like the work is a hustle and then just like setting your rates and like pitching and finding your clients is a hustle on its own. Yeah. So I definitely feel you on that. Yeah. But I think I that brings me back to one of the points you shared earlier that I want to talk about now is how important it is to do the work for the sake of the work itself, not for the sake of recognition or what people are going to think. You know, a lot of the the work that entrepreneurs do too is, in your own words, like kind of out of the spotlight. People don't see all the things we do. We wear a million different hats. It's not always seen or recognized, but it's if you're doing the work for the sake of that recognition and appreciation and like constant feedback from other people, you're not you're not going to get it right. Like yes, you have to love yes. the work enough to do the work knowing that you may never get someone who pats you on the back. And that's where so many people I think get caught up in the indecision around what they want to do because we we don't necessarily take the right things into account when we're making these types of decisions. And so it's about knowing what work is important for you to do, important enough for you to do Knowing that some people won't like it, knowing that some people won't recognize it, knowing that it's not going to go the way you think it is in your mind, right? Like those are things you can probably count on (laughs) in terms of what won't go right, but that's why it's that much more important to know the why behind the work itself and be pulled kind of from a deeper place to what you feel called to do through that work. Right. Oh my goodness. That's such a good point. Cause I feel like some of the stories that I had published when I was at CNN would have such a huge reach just by nature of, of the giant that CNN is. So they would go so far and get shared and people would, you know, um, reach out to me that I went to college with and be like, Oh, great story. I read this. And now I'm working on a story that I believe in so strongly. And I think it's, an amazing and worthwhile story. And by the time it's published, like I know that not even a fraction of the people that saw my work at CNN are going to see this story, but it's just what you're saying. It's like, I believe like in the integrity of this story Mm -hmm. and that it needs to be shared so that I would rather invest my time in that instead of doing something just for the metrics and the numbers and the eyeballs that will be on another story that maybe I'm not fully invested Mm -hmm. in. So it just like you're saying, like it does have to do with, it's really for me, like a matter of integrity. Like, am I doing something just for the reach and the impressions and the metrics of it? Or am I doing it because I believe that this story, this voice needs to be heard. And I think they'd, deserve like this, you know, this, um, chance to share and I want to help them Mm -hmm. do that. And so it's just like, uh, yeah, definitely like a matter of integrity, I think doing the work for the sake of the work, even though it's not in the spotlight. 
Yeah, totally. So that also reminds me of something that you call quiet strength, the power of having quiet strength. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means? Yeah. I I love this like combination of words because I feel like it has to do with like you've used this before like just kind of this deep rootedness in yourself that there's not a striving and there's not a proving like I don't need to walk into a room and like prove to people that I'm doing fine on my, with my new freelance business like a quiet strength in the way I see it is a um, assurance that who I am like on my own is enough that I don't need to like impress people that I don't need to have thousands of followers that I don't need to have like you know, a certain number on my paycheck, but that the integrity with which I'm living my life with how, which, how I'm treating people, how I'm listening and learning is like the most important thing that I can be and that I can do. And that should outweigh the, the proving and the striving and the search for success that I feel like I've previously been so incredibly wrapped up in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I do think there's something fun about the two words together, quiet strength. Typically we think of being strong as something that's kind of out there and loud and bold and in everyone's face. Right. And it doesn't have to be that way. It's the way, you know, it's the way we think about leadership and to be a leader, you have to look a certain way to be strong. You have to be a certain way. You can find your own way of being strong, of showing strength. And there's nothing better or worse about how to show up in strength. It's just, knowing what's going to feel right for you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Awesome. Well, I do want to know, as I ask all of my guests, when it comes to living a life of significance, I feel like we've kind of had some bits and pieces throughout the conversation so far, and I could probably guess a bit about what you think of when you think of a life of significance, but I'd love to hear in your own words what that means to you and what a life of significance looks like. Yeah, I love that question. I love that you ask everyone that because I think for so much of my life, I have wanted significance to look um, like, oh, uh, I don't know, like a certain title or a certain paycheck or a certain level of recognition and worldly standards. But I do think that as I've made this transition from CNN into starting my own business and pursuing stories that I believe are important. I think having a life of significance for me looks like treating everyone that I interact with, with compassion and respect. And I am more interested in being a connector, like helping people who are doing cool things connect with other people who are doing cool things instead of, instead of the need to be the center of attention or like, be the um kind of the focal point i want to like uncenter myself from my own universe and like look on how i can help people and partner with people who are already doing amazing things um and then on a super practical level too just like family and friends like people in our immediate life like my marriage my family and my friends i want to make sure that i'm being the best like person to each of them and making sure that they feel loved and valued. Cause I have noticed that a lot of people I respect in the industry, whether it's a photographer or a journalist, they have really um, sad home lives. Like a lot of them have um, come from a lot of brokenness or broken um, families. And I just went to a workshop recently where a lot of the women had just, were talking about how, whether it was their marriage or something personally had, um, had kind of ended and they were saying that they felt lonely. I do think at the end of the day, the human relationships we have are worth more than any paycheck or any like amount of fame we could possibly get. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that because so much of what I hear and what people think about when they think about a life of significance, it's this like big, bigger thing around making an impact and doing good work. And, and we forget that, we're surrounded by 
like we forget that we have more immediate ways to f- to find that for ourselves in the relationships within our own homes, right? Yeah. Like yeah. we don't have to go out and touch a million people and make an impact on people's lives in these massive ways for our lives to be significant. And and of course everyone has their own definition of this, which is why I love asking this question, but to your right. point, like who in your life now can be a part of this definition for you? Who in your life now, what in your life now is is a phone call away, is across the street that you can connect with and, and have a conversation with or, or whatever it might be that will kind of, I don't know, give rise to what you're looking for in terms yeah. of the life you want to live, you know? Right. And it's like exactly back to the um, earlier point of quiet strength. I just think, again, with the quiet strength and integrity being the central themes of how I hope to live. If I am reaching like worldly success and respect where my articles are getting published and I'm getting um, paid really well for it, but I am not being kind to the immediate people in my life, or I'm not like having space for them or trying to continue learning and becoming a better person, then what is the point? Like, what is the point of any of that worldly success? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I also want to know if you could write a letter to yourself at any point in time, what point in time would you go to and what would you say to yourself? You know, I thought a lot about this and I actually think I would just talk to myself in the present moment and tell myself to take a deep breath and it's going to be okay because a lot of times I get so caught up in thinking about the future. And like I was saying earlier, I mean, I literally made a game plan to leave CNN that was like eight months in time. And like my, like my ability to strategize for the future is very strong, but my ability to live in the present is not. So I think Mm -hmm. I would really need to talk to myself in the present moment, like, Lyric, take a deep breath that you are alive and this is a beautiful gift that you are existing on planet Earth right now. Like, don't let this go by. Mm. Because what a tragedy to let like a day go by and not be grateful for the fact that I'm living on this planet and I'm so lucky to even be here and have a chance to pursue love and success and all these things that I just feel like, oh my gosh, what a gift. And I don't want to take that for granted. So I just give myself a a talking to right now in the present moment. <laughs> yes. So many of us need to hear that from ourselves. Everything is fine. You are okay. Yes, Take a deep breath. Exactly. We're good. Everything's good. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I have no doubt that people will want to follow up with you and see all the great work you're up to. And I know you mentioned this project that you're pouring yourself into. So tell us a little bit more about that and how people can find you in the internet. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) No, totally. I love it. Um, So if anyone is interested in collaborating with me right now, I'm working on this project that involves like female chefs specifically. So if you are a chef or you are even a home cook, but you're trying to start your own business, like I would love to work with you, writing, photography, videography. I um, try to weave all of those into my portfolio. So feel free to reach out to me and look me up. My website is lyriclewin.com. Um, should I spell that or does that matter? I'm like not sure if people know. Oh, yeah. Is. I'll yeah. I'll link everything in the show notes for, that, for everyone. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then So my website is lyricluin.com and then my Instagram is at lyricluin. And that was my conversation with Lyric. I hope you all enjoyed. If anything from this podcast resonates with you and you are ready to find answers to some of the questions we posed, who are you without the job title? Who are you without the external things you found your sense of worth in? What would it be like to take off those masks and strip away at these identities and peel back the layers of the onion and really connect to yourself and what you truly want in terms of how to live a life that feels integrated and full of integrity and whole and authentic to you? 
that is exactly the type of coaching that I do. If you're interested in hearing more or learning more about coaching and if coaching is the right fit for you, if it's the right time to explore these types of questions in your life, check out the show notes. You'll see a link to schedule a call with me. I would love to hear more about your journey and how I can support you along your path. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the episode this week. As you know, the inner work circle is also all about helping you find worth in yourself. So if you're looking for a year long experience to dig into these questions with other women, the next cohort does start in January of 2020. So you can add your name to the wait list, which is also linked in the show notes below. And I haven't said this in probably a couple months of these episodes, mainly because I feel a little weird about it, but it shouldn't be weird because you're listening to a podcast. So what I'm going to ask you to do is help me get more visibility on this podcast by rating, reviewing, subscribing. I love reading podcast reviews. It's so helpful to me. I don't just want to see the good stuff. I love honest feedback. So Please subscribe, rate, and review. I would love to hear from you and see what resonates and how I can better serve you through the podcast. So thank you all for your time. Looking forward to connecting, and we'll catch you on next week's episode. Sincerely, me. Me.